What a thrill it was this week to welcome Steve Walther into Santiago. We have had an amazing week hanging out and we took a few minutes to just talk about his most recent Camino here in a new Camino Cafe podcast short called Pilgrims in Santiago. Let's hear from Steve. I'm here with Camino Cafe podcast favorite, Steve Walther. Steve, welcome back to Santiago. Well, it's so great to be here, Lee, especially with you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, we've been doing interviews, I think, for two years now and finally got to meet, which was amazing. So I'm so glad we got to do that. It was. It was great because it felt like we've known each other forever, but we've never actually um, really been to where we were together. So, Steve, how many times does it make it now that you have walked into this beautiful city? Not nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> this was my fourth Camino. I've been here many times, but this was my fourth Camino walking in. Fantastic. And this last Camino, tell everyone which route you took and uh, maybe the highlights of it. Yeah. So I did a little bit differently this time. I did the Camino Port Portugues, which I started off on the coastal route and I switched over partway up the coast over in Camina over to Tui and then crossed over into Spain and then up to Pontevedra. And in Ponte Vedra, I did something that I've always wanted to do, and I was so fortunate and lucky to find the right people to do it with. I did the spiritual variant, and which if any of you haven't heard of it, look look into it. And for those of you that have been wanting to do it, I can't recommend it enough. It's 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 probably my favorite three days that I've ever had on the Camino. Just incredible. And that's saying a lot because uh, tell everyone how many other routes that you've walked. Oh, this was my fourth. Right, yeah. but you've walked the Camino Frances. Part of the Frances, and I've walked um, the El Primitivo, which I also love, love, love. And then I walked the, all the central route on the Portuguese last year. Right. So, um, yeah, this that route is just it's just incredible. So it's just a few kilometers outside of Ponte Vedra, and then you cut off and you head up, up this, well, you, you head up this pretty incredible mountain. It's really <laughs> steep, right? It is. You walk up and up and up. And we kept thinking, oh my gosh, it's around every corner. We thought we were at the top and then we celebrated a little too early and then had to keep walking. But when you get uh, on the way up, actually, there's a monastery that you can stop and look through. It's called uh, Monast Monasterio Pollo. And yes. It's not spelled like the chicken. It's P-O-I-O. Yes. And uh, just incredible. They have a copy of the Codex there, which was the original kind of uh, Camino for Dummies back from the Middle Ages. Camino for Dummies. <laughs> but it was it was just, it's an incredible, beautiful, beautiful place. What did you think of the mosaic there? Oh my gosh, they have a mosaic of the entire French route from Paris that that wraps around a whole a plaza in the middle of the cloisters of, of, this, of, the, of the cathedral there. And it is just, well not cathedral, but the big church at the monastery. But it's, oh, it's just, I, words don't do it justice. You can probably Google and look at it, but my gosh, it's just incredible. And then from there, you walk up over the mountain and down uh, up to, to the top of the mountain. There's a, there's another monastery in which you can stay. And it was called a Monasterio, um, I can never say it correctly. Armenteria. Arben, Armenteria. And you can stay there with, uh, with the nuns and, 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 and the church inside there. And it's just, it's the most incredible thing. We went to the uh, Pilgrim's Blessing Mass there. And the nuns and one priest come together and, and they sing all of these songs and blessings, um, it, 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 it's, we were all almost in tears. It was just so beautiful. And then the next day you wake up and you walk down this creek and you follow this creek that originally there were 30 mills, grain mills, um, stone grain mills that ran off of the, the water of the creek. And they're kind of all in, in, in disappear. Now they're, I don't know how, how many hundreds and hundreds of years old they are, but it is, you just follow the creek. You kept, it, we kept thinking that Robin Hood and Little John were going to come out of the woods because that's what it looked like. Kind of mossy oak tree forest following this beautiful creek. And then you come out the other side and then you walk through vineyards for, I don't know, probably 15, 20 kilometers. And you always wonder, you know, Portugal, Spain being so small, how, how is it that they send wine all over the world? Well, we saw because there, <laughs> every square inch of dirt had wine, wine uh, grape plants growing out of it. But, oh, my gosh. And then you get to the town called Villanova. And in Villanova, you take a boat. And you take a boat to Padron, where when they brought Santiago's body to the place where it's interred now, that they, they, they brought it off of the stone boat, put it on this old Roman um, altar, put it on a cart, and then moved it here to Santiago, right, right behind me here. Yes. So that particular spot 
is incredible. You follow the river up where they brought his body and it's marked by, I think there's 17, 18 yeah. crosses. Yeah, I think so. And, and it marked the original route where they brought the body. And again, one of the most incredible, um, you know, staying in the monastery, following that creek, getting on the boat, going through. And oh, amazing thing too, there's a fort there that, and this is something I knew nothing about, that back in the day they built this fort to ward off the Vikings that came up in the 9th and 11th century, I think. And then, so they have a replica Viking boat there too that they do, they do reenactments of Viking attacks. Um, yeah. We didn't get to see that. Um, I don't know if that's fortunate or unfortunate, but <laughs> no Vikings were seen or, or heard in the filming of this, of this here. But we had a wonderful, wonderful time and it was a completely different experience and over the top of what I had, could have anticipated. And I walked with some wonderful pilgrims, um, so, uh, one from Portugal, Sergio, Sergio and, uh, and, he, and he, um, he too was blown away, walked with Ivy from uh, Taiwan, and the three of us walked that route um, on the spiritual variant together. Then we met up with a group of other pilgrims that we, because you have to kind of get a group together in the off season now, because they won't go unless you have a full boat. Yeah, I thought that was so creative of you because in, you know, during regular season, you know, before November and say probably from about May through no, before the end of November, mm -hmm. um, you can buy tickets to ride a boat, but yeah. that was not available for you guys. No. So what did you do? Well, it was kind of, we had Ivy, the Taiwanese. Uh, she was kind of, uh, for lack of a better, our, 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 our prometeer out there. And she was talking to everybody trying to get, are you going to go? Are you going to go? Are you going to go? Come with, with us on the boat. And by the time we got there, we had seven of the eight people required. And she was so persistent that even with seven, they let us go, even though we were supposed to have eight. <laughs> so I love that can do attitude of pilgrims, oh, right? Everything's figure outable if you just look and yep. I, to be honest, I think the guy was afraid of her a little bit and said, I'll go, <laughs> just stop, you know, talking to me about why we have to go. Yeah. But we, it was really an amazing trip. And, and again, our, our group of people that we met were all from all over the world. We have a, a we had a Dutchman, a Spaniard, um, a, uh, a, sing, a, a fellow from Singapore and, um, and I'm, I'm missing somebody, but it was just a wonderful, wonderful time for people from all over. Oh, Denmark. And you had somebody from Denmark. She, yeah. she met us, with us, she met us there in Padron. So oh, in she Padron. Was, yeah. okay. okay. So, um, but anyway, it was, um, and it was an open boat. It wasn't, you know, it was, we were sitting in seats in the open and you go through this area where they fish for, um, mejones, mussels. Yes. And we got to watch, watch them fish for mussels commercially. And it was, you know, again, a different Camino altogether. You're, you're on a boat ride. Yeah. Um, okay. So those days on the spiritual variant, magical for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But magical. you had some rainy days, my friend, oh, before my you got gosh. there. So what tips do you have for pilgrims? You know, because I know with your work schedule, you can't always pick the most yeah. ideal time to come. You have to pick when you can get away from your, your work. Yeah. So if you have to come during a rainy season, what tips do you have for folks? Well, make sure you know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> always yeah, helpful. Yeah. Always helpful. It was, I, I said, my legs were tired. And then, you know, I, I was, did a lot of this. But with that said is um, it was very, very rainy a lot. And, and I, I've walked this time of year um, before October, November. And by far, this was the rainiest. And in fact, there was a few spots where they closed the trail and we had to kind of side country it up the hill because there was literally six, 12 inches of water in the trail. I was posting on Facebook to, 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 to friends is this a trail or is this a creek? And they had to guess because it was hard to tell because they were, <laughs> they were, it was so, I mean, there was literally, it looked like a creek, some yeah. of them. And um, so that made it a little bit arduous to say the least, but it was still um, amazing. I was talking to um, Nadia, a, a, a Danish girl, and we both said, you know, it's, it was a, a great metaphor for life where we'd start off with such trepidation every morning with, oh my gosh, it's raining again and we're gonna be walking in the rain. And, but once you got out in it, you're in it and it's not like you're going to get more wet. Yeah. <laughs> so we just, you know, you embraced it and walked and, and in spite of it, um, you know, usually we got a little break at some point in the day and could change some socks and try to dry our feet a little bit. But um, all in all, it was just part of the journey and part of the magic and part of the excitement. I, um, I did walk more, um, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with 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 plastic all over me more than I have in the past, but other than that, it was it, it was it is what it is. Yeah. So I just one last question for you. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes you keep coming back? You, to to re to get that feeling again. What's that feeling? 
that feeling is um, positivity. You mm. know, I think today we live in a world that's so crazy with negative and negative and how they're bad and they're this way. And on the Camino, we're all together. Our spirits are together. We're all helping each other. None of that other outside stuff is there. And I, and I hope for me, I know, but I hope for everybody that walks it, they go back and bring some of that back to their daily life. Um, and, and I think anyone that has walked the Camino in the past, they know that as soon as, before they even get back, really, they're already planning their next one because that feeling is just so strong and feeling of love and together and, and, and everything is, it's hard to replicate, even though that we should replicate it every day in life. This is a great way to remind ourselves how we should do it. Ah, well said. Oh, thank how you. does it feel when you look at the cathedral? Oh, She's my beautiful gosh. today. Oh, you <laughs> it's know, sunny. Of of the of the twelve days we walked on this route, and then at the two or three days I was here afterwards, um, decompressing. <laughs> um, we I only had two days of sun the whole time, so. This is not what it was like at all. I think I just got sunburned just standing here. I right agree. Now. <laughs> I gotta let you, I gotta let you go. The sun's yeah. so strong. But welcome no, to Santiago, my friend. And what were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say that rain, shine, wind, hail, snow, whatever. This this is the magic that that keeps us back and the feeling and and that we do all that we can to replicate that feeling. Oh, I so love with it. the sound of the bells. Mm. What a way to end this interview, Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you got to come to Santiago. Thank and We got you. to spend some time together. Thank you for letting me meet your pilgrim family. They were amazing. <laughs> and um, I hope you're back soon. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lee.